that gave me an ATAR of my overall UMAT score. I was lucky enough to get two interview offers. My HSC marks were Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Laura and if you've clicked on this video then you're probably wanting to know how I became a medical student. Well, you're in luck because today that's exactly what I'm going to tell you. So just a little bit of background to qualify me in making this video. I am currently going into my fourth year of medical school at Western Sydney University in Australia. So before we jump into exactly how I got into medical school, I just thought I would provide a little bit of background so hopefully you can see areas where we're similar, maybe where we differ and just keep that in mind. So to start with, no one in my family was medical. I'm not sure where I got the idea that I would like to be a doctor from, but for a very long time that had been my goal. I grew up in a rural town in Australia, in the Hunter Valley. I went to my local public high school. I was very sporty as a teenager. School was never really my sole focus, but it was something that I always enjoyed and did pretty well at. In the last few years of high school, I took on some more leadership roles. I ended up being the vice captain of my school and I feel a combination of all of those things set me up really nicely to slip into an undergraduate medical program. So how did I do it? Well I'm going to start from the very very beginning which I believe is year 11 and 12 subject selection. So going into year 11 and 12 I decided to take up advanced English, general maths, chemistry, biology, PDHPE and French. 12 units, no extension subjects, not even advanced maths. And then I ended up dropping French. So I took 10 units through the HSE, which is the minimum. And honestly, I would recommend that. It's saving you a lot of extra work. I used the time that I was studying French to then study more for my other subjects. So you're sort of ensuring success. A lot of people take 12 units through as sort of like a backup in case something goes wrong in one of your subjects. But if you have this extra time and you're performing at a high enough level, hopefully to be considering medicine, you probably don't need a backup. Next on the timeline would be choosing unis. I'm happy to do a full video on things that you can look for when choosing a medical school. But for me, I wanted an undergraduate program. I wanted it to be five years because I wanted to be in and out as quickly as possible. I wanted an MD program, so that's a Doctor of Medicine, rather than Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery. In the long run, there's not really much difference, but it was just a personal preference. And ideally, I still wanted to be located in New South Wales. So that gave me three options. I had UNSW, Western Sydney Uni, and the joint medical program between Newcastle and the University of New England. The next thing to consider is the UCAT. When I did it, it was the UMAT. I was the last year of handwriting things on paper. I, full disclosure, would have absolutely bombed the UCAT if I didn't do a preparation course. I think sometimes there's a little bit of a stigma around that, but I mean, who cares It got me here? I would highly recommend doing a preparation course. I went through med entry. They were great, had no issues with them, would recommend them. I'm sure there's others out there that are also good. They can be a little bit expensive. The one that I did, I think it was about $900, which is a lot of money and I'm aware of that. But the way I saw it was it's an investment in my future. So it's something that I was willing to pay at the time and I'm very glad I did. Now, in terms of the juicy stuff, exact scores. My exact scores won't necessarily be relevant for anyone now, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. So actually, let me look it up. Okay, I think it's important to note that these are raw scores, not percentiles or percentages. They give you your raw score for each section and then an overall percentile. There were three sections. Of section one, which was logic and problem solving, I got 65. For section two, which was understanding people, I got 50. And for section three, which was pattern recognition, I got 70. So my overall UMAT score, which is the percentile, was 94, which I was 
ecstatic with. I had been told to aim for about 90. That was quite a safe guarantee for an interview offer. These days for the UCAT, I've heard that about 2,800 is the minimum that they'll offer an interview for. And about 3,000 is a really safe bet if you're a results driven person like I am and you're needing a number to go for. That doesn't include the situational judgment I believe which is a separate score altogether definitely what you need to do though is once you've sort of got your short list of unis down go and have a look and see if you can find out any information about how they're weighting their UCAT scores some unis will weigh sections a lot heavier I think Western Sydney might double weight situational judgment I'm not really sure why some unis might weight the UCAT really highly overall and that you need a really good UCAT to be competitive on their list of potential applicants some unis you might not even need the UCAT so so definitely go and have a look at that. I would be more than happy to do a full video on the UCAT if that's something you're interested in that might be helpful. Just leave a comment below and I can make that happen. Now the UCAT's done, the next step is receiving interview offers. You'll generally sit your UCAT in July and interview offers will come out very early November. Generally the interview period is sort of end of November, start of December. I was lucky enough to get two interview offers. So I was successful at Western Sydney and also with the joint medical program. So that's the Newcastle University of New England combined program. Missed out on UNSW, so bit of a bummer, but I had two interviews, so I was happy to forge ahead with that. My interviews were at the end of November, I think. One was a Tuesday afternoon and one was a Wednesday morning. So back to back, a lot of driving in between. Both of them were MMIs, so multiple mini interviews. A quick rundown of what that means. There is eight stations. You get 10 minutes at each station. So two minutes reading time and you stand at the door, they have like a piece of paper, blue tack to the door with a scenario which you read. And then you go into the room and you have up to eight minutes to talk about the scenario. They'll ask you questions. It can be a whole bunch of things. I'm also happy to do a video on interviews if you'd like to see that just let me know below so my first interview was at Newcastle Uni I was so nervous I definitely bombed out on a couple of stations but overall I felt okay it was not too bad the interviews were sort of like the thing that I, I felt most comfortable about having to do so it was okay then I jumped in the car headed down to Western Sydney and the next morning I had my interview down there again eight stations exactly the same setup and I think because there was such a quick turnaround I felt practiced and ready um, so I was much happier with how my interview went there I just felt better about it you sort of get a gut feeling you know interviews were done and then more waiting this is one thing I didn't preface this video by saying is that there's so much waiting it's literally insane go into it knowing that and knowing that it's a process because there's a lot of waiting okay so now it is the start of December and ATAR results are released again I'm happy to share my HSC results with you because I think that's actually helpful so let me just pull them up my HSC marks were Advanced English, 88, General Maths, 96, Chemistry, 87, Biology, 92, and PDHPE, 97. So overall, that gave me an ATAR of 97.75, which I was quite happy with. My little imaginary goal was about 98, because I'd heard that was around what was competitive for medicine. So 97.75, I was stoked with. So the ATAR came out early to mid-December, and then because of the way that I had preferenced my uni choices in UAC. I actually received an early entry offer into medicine at Western through their rural entry program, which is fantastic by the way, on the 16th, 17th of December, I think. So I accepted that and then I rearranged my UAC preferences because that in itself is an art and then was fortunate enough to secure another offer to the joint medical program at their University of New England campus in the main round offer in January. So then I had a choice between Western Sydney and the University of New England's joint program. In the end, for me, it came down to the fact that I'd been to the Western Sydney campus. I'd actually stayed a night on the campus as part of being a rural applicant and I felt very welcomed there. I thought they had great facilities. I felt much more sure about what I was getting myself into rather than I'd never been to Armadale. So in the end, I decided to go to Western Sydney and honestly, I haven't looked back since. It's been, it's been great. So that basically wraps up 
the story of how I got into medicine. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and click the subscribe button too. I'm only new here on YouTube, so it really helps. And that is all for now. I hope you have a lovely afternoon and I'll see you next time. Bye.